Well, <clears throat> some things are being put out that uh, the Hamas leader who was assassinated was talking with uh, Netanyahu about a peace treaty and that Netanyahu offed him because Israel didn't want any peace. Well, let's sort through the mixture and get out a little box and lift above it all and see the big picture. When you kill a snake, you cut the head off of it. You've heard that old adage. But we'll go through this. On the 6th of October, an Iranian drone flew over Israel, did you forget that? And photographed a reactor building in its air defense system radar. And this data was sent to Hamas. Well, that would be a, a, a month, a little over a month before this fighting began, but they got the data. While they're supposedly brokering a peace, you know, trying to, this, this falsehood about there was supposedly going to be maybe a treaty between them, they're gathering data. It's sent to Hamas to help aim its rocket attack on Dimona. Less than 24 hours after Sudanese President Omar Bashir pledged decisive steps against Israeli interests, which are now legitimate targets for the destruction of the Iranian missile plant in Khartoum. See? Palestinian rocket teams early Sunday on the 28th fired Grad missiles as target finders against Israel's nuclear reactor in Dimona. This is reported exclusively by Debka file. They exploded on open ground in the Ramat Negev district southwest of the town of Demona. The nuclear plant is only 42.5 kilometers as the crow flies from the southern Gaza Strip. Saturday night, the Israeli Air Force struck a Palestinian rocket team in the southern Gaza town of Kanyuns, killing one Hamas operative and injuring a second critically. The Palestinian Hamas has evidently launched a new and expanded targeting policy marking two developments of grave import importance. One, its rulers have submitted the Gaza Strip to Tehran, Iran, for use as its southern operational arm against Israel. complementing Hezbollah's pivotal role to the north of Israel and two, having acquired improved surface missiles, Hamas is setting its sights firmly on the most sensitive locations within their reach, Israel's nuclear reactor and Air Force bases and the American X-band radar station in the Negev. The Islamist rulers of Gaza are expected to keep on trying to perfect their aim. They're going to keep on, they were, they were at this time, going to keep on shooting at Israel. Israel's defense ministry and high IDF command sounded at sea Sunday over the dangerous new departure. The IDF spokesperson started out by disclosing that one grad rocket from Gaza had been aimed at the city Beersheba, later raising the number to two, both of which exploded outside the city. But the grad launched against the nuclear reactor at 744 was followed by hours of official silence. Even then, the Army spokesperson reported a missile fired against Ramat and Agev in general terms without mentioning the reactor's location in that district at its northmost point. It was the second time in three weeks that Tehran, Iran, was seen to be focusing on Israel's nuclear plant. So you got collaboration going on between Iran and Hamas because Iran's pissed off that Israel has took action to delay their finally putting all their pieces together where they can get a nuclear bomb assembled and be able to mount it and launch it and use it. Okay, on October the 6th, 
An Iranian stealth drone which flew over Israel managed to photograph the reactor building and its air defense system's radar. The data gathered was given to Hamas to help guide its first rocket attack on Dimona. Deb Kafile reported earlier that not two, but four Grad rockets were fired Sunday morning at Beersheba. They all exploded outside the town and caused no casualties or damage. The mayor decided to keep schools closed for the day since none are fortified against rocket attacks. Beersheba University stayed open for studies. Saturday night, the Palestinian Palestinians shot a salvo of five Qassam rockets at the Ekshal district. Three exploded over the Gaza Strip, two on the border fence. The Israel Air Force strike over Kanyuns followed this violation. Followed. The Israeli Air Force strike followed a, this violation of the informal truce requested by Hamas and brokered by Egypt for the Eid al-Adha festival starting Friday and ending Monday. Israel strike follows violation of informal truce requested by Hamas and brokered by Egypt who is in solidarity with Hamas in this latest outbreak. So the bad guys speak with the forked tongues and put out false things. They say they want a peace treaty, but their actions do not reflect what supposedly is pumped out into the media for the masses to eat and divulge, or excuse me, digest. I don't know how else to put it, <clears throat> but uh, two sides of the fence. You're on one side, you're on the other. God's on one side, everything else that's not Him, any other religion, any other false worshiped God is on the other. I mean, what can I say? What else can I say? I don't know how much more clearly to put it. You can't blame everything on Zionism or Zionist. Yeah, there's scumbag Zionists, and then there's actually some good people involved in it that aren't scumbags. It's a mixed bag. But in the ultimate plan, they think they're enacting their plan for their dirty deed, you know, ideas. But their plan is a plan inside of a larger plan, which is God's plan. And he's using them and allowing them to do these things because it all works into his ultimate plan, you see. If you go against the Israeli people, you're doomed. That's it. End of story. And I am well versed on... Uh, the tribes, the Israelites and the Jews, the North, the North tribe, the South tribes, all the na different names. So, I have looked at everything. I do study everything. What do you think I do whenever I go away and there's not like a family medical emergency or I don't have to work a lot when you don't see me making a video for five, seven days or something? That's what I'm doing. I'm thinking. I'm searching. I'm finding, I'm digesting, I'm praying to help me to understand, to show me what I need to know so I can help bring it out, explain it the best that I can. Perhaps my words are not the best to uh, give clarity and um, sin, you know. The reason that we sin is not because we don't have the um, we don't have evil inside of us. We have evil around us. What we have inside of us is a flawed genetic, resulting from the joining in the Garden of Eden of a fallen angel and a human woman, Eve that perverted our DNA and changed it from what we were into what we are now. 
as small as it may be, it just allows them to be able to tempt us. Otherwise, tempting us would be substantially harder for them to do. So, you don't, you, you don't get by any day at all I don't, without sinning. That's just the way it is. You're going to think it so fast, that's a sin. Your thought transforms into actions, possibly. Make more sin. So, every day, you're flooded with temptations. And it all starts with your mind and your thought. And it can happen fast. But it is because that little receptor and that genetic code is there that is not ours that they're able to tempt us much more easily than if it were removed. And so, when you get a new body in the end, and God makes us a new eternal body, that will be removed, as it was in the beginning. Our genetic code will be changed to what it was and what it will be in our immortality. So, like I said before, if you're the devil, and that's all you got you're gonna make more to tempt people you're going to make alternative choices you're gonna make your own religion that you can be God of and you're gonna get other people that don't want to believe in this that maybe come to yours maybe they don't even like yours so you're gonna make a whole lot of different ones and that's what's happened he has made so many different ones. And I'm going to shake the tree. I'm going to anger some people. I'm sorry if I do, but that's just the way it is. I cannot say Islam or Allah is good because everything that I've found, is it, it's just not. The people are lost. They're born into it. They can't get out of it. It's like a mafia. You can come into it, but you can't get out of it. You know, you get out of it, you get punished. They'll kill you, whatever depending upon where you live. That's good versus evil. Who do you think is going to be... Who do you think the devil's religion is? Really. Come on. Be real. Good versus evil. Who are the two biggest religions in the world? Christianity and Islam. One guy's Allah. One guy's God. You get it? competing. Devil makes a move, God makes a counter move. He keeps going back and forth, back and forth. Devil tries to take souls, God tries to save souls. You gotta come out of the box. You gotta get high up above everything and look and see the big picture. You gotta open your eyes and see you gotta open your ears and hear. You gotta open your heart and love. You gotta open your mind and learn and know. I don't know what else to say. But Israel does not strike first and kill people just to kill people. I mean, you know, somebody's gonna say, well, they killed that guy, they struck first, they killed the Hamas leader. Well, you go back and back and back. It's, it eventually turns out to be a retaliatory strike from a so-called already little truce of which they violated Hamas. And you got the Iranians are tied in with them. And you got the Egyptians and everything. It's a big circle of scum around Israel. Come on! It's going to continue. Maybe this is not going to in develop into the larger war, but it will in time. Maybe not this one, but there'll be a bigger war. And it'll be more than just Israel, and everybody will have to pick sides. Well, I hope the real God can, can touch your heart and you can know Him because He loves you. And he wants you to come to him. Seek and you shall find. He never denies anyone. He loves you all. I'll talk to you soon.